Inside Science. I have a friend whose grandmother died of Alzheimer's disease. I met her once when I was a child in a little room of a large nursing home. I never forgot my friend's expression or that of her mother who was caring for her. One in three over 65s in the US will suffer from Alzheimer's disease. It touches so many of us and the experience is horrible. At first you start to lose your memory, then your general cognitive ability starts to drop. And by the end of the disease, your behavior and your personality changes and you may suffer from hallucinations and seizures. From early on, you need caring for, and this is devastating for the carer, watching someone they love have their personality stripped away from them. So what's happening to the brain? Well, the brain tissue degenerates. It starts in the hippocampus and the frontal lobes, and then it spreads across the whole cortex, and finally into the lower brain structures. And this is what causes the changes in behavior. Now, if you zoom in to the microscopic level, you can see amyloid beta proteins coagulating between cells to form sticky plaques and tangles of tau proteins appear within neurons. But neither are completely responsible for the disease. And likewise, we know of many genes that contribute to making plaques and tangles, but no one gene can make you certain of contracting the disease. And the most important question is, will we ever be able to cure it? Well, we've been trying, but it's not been going well. We have yet to produce a single drug that can combat the disease. One of the biggest problems is that we don't really know how you catch Alzheimer's disease. There's certainly a genetic component, some forms of it, but infection may play a role as well, as might the action of the glial and the microglial cells that live alongside the neurons in the brain. And why does it occur overwhelmingly in the old? Well, in fact, we might actually contract Alzheimer's early in life. But while our brains are young and strong, we can live with it, at least for some time. So now the thinking is, instead of trying to fight the disease, why don't we focus on beefing up the brain cells so that they can live alongside the disease? So that is what a lot of research is doing now, making drugs that keep neurons healthy and synapses growing, even as the disease progresses. On top of that, finding new ways of diagnosing Alzheimer's early so we can start bolstering the brain as soon as possible. And one thing we can all do is to combat the disease by adapting our lifestyle. Exercise, diet, and mental stimulation are all potential ways to keep the brain robust so that it can hold off the disease for longer. We will unravel the riddle of Alzheimer's. There are so many exciting theories. Soluble amyloid, the glymphatic system, microglial inflammation, to name but a few. And when we finally know the cause, the cure cannot be far behind. For Inside Science, I'm Ali Jennings. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.